Hi everyone, welcome to Brilliant Botany episode 18. Today I'm going to be talking about how plants acquire and move water. Water is one of the most important resources for a plant. It is used in photosynthesis and it is one of the many things that make up plant cells. That water, of course, has to come from somewhere. In most cases, plants get their water from the soil. The term vascular plants refers to any plant with a vascular system, which is the system of tubes that helps move water and nutrients through the plant. Most plants that you would think of, like flowers or the trees behind me, are vascular plants. Vascular tissue is made up of two types of these tubes, xylem and phloem. Water moves up the plant through the xylem from the roots to the leaves, and nutrients dissolved in water move down the plant through the phloem. But how does the water move? There are many factors that help plants move water upwards against gravity, and two of them are capillary action and transpiration. You may recognize the term capillary action from chemistry class is the ability of a liquid, in this case water, to move upward through a small tube. It is caused by hydrogen bonding between the water molecules that allows them to gel together and move upward through that small space. In this case, the small tube is the xylem. It isn't capillary action alone, however, that helps plants move water up through their xylem. Evaporation of water through the plant's leaves is also a huge factor. Plant leaves are covered in tiny pores called stomata. These stomata can open and close based on different factors, but when they are open, water evaporates out through them. This pull of evaporation pulls the water up through the plant xylem and forms something called a transpiration stream, the continuous line of water that moves from the plant's roots up through its leaves. It is also sometimes called a water wire. On the small scale, the movement of water by hydrogen bonding and transpiration isn't all that impressive, but on the large scale, the effects are baffling. A fantastic example is the coastal redwood, an organism I've mentioned in previous videos. These massive trees have to move water from their roots to their leaves, a distance of over 300 feet or 90 meters. They move hundreds of gallons of water a day through the net of xylem and phloem tubing throughout their trunk and branches. Vascular tissue, however, has its limits. A study published in Nature in 2014 estimated that redwood trees could not grow over a height of 400 feet or 120 meters. At that height, the movement of water can no longer overcome gravity and bring water to the plant's leaves. There's one more extraordinary thing about how redwoods obtain water. Redwoods grow in the northwestern United States in valleys very rich in fog. Some studies have found that redwoods can actually reverse the transpiration stream and pull water from fog in through their leaves. Those are the very basics of how water moves through plants. There are many other contributing factors like osmotic pressure, but those are the core aspects that you need to know about vascular tissue. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to all the lovely people who have left video topic ideas and questions on my other videos. On my Plants Can Sense Gravity video, Pax Imp asks if there have been any studies done on how plants grow without gravity. I did some digging and it turns out there have. Arabidopsis thaliana seedlings were grown on the International Space Station a few years ago. What they found was that without gravity, plants still grew with their shoots up and their roots down, but they used light to determine which direction. So with the absence of gravity, plants use the direction of the light to determine which way to grow. I've put the link to that study in the doobly-doo, as well as a time-lapse video of some Brassica rapa seedlings growing in weightlessness. Definitely check those out. And if you have a question for me, please leave it in the comments and I might answer it next time.